Our distributors have created numerous case studies covering multiple industries, including hospitals, offices, shopping malls, hotels, casinos, airports, education facilities, supermarkets, residential, ships, oil rigs, in fact, everywhere air conditioning is used. Significantly, ASHRAE has incorporated UVC into its handbooks and is developing standards. In addition, the U.S. government's General Service Administration, the Center for Disease Control and Protection, the Italian Department of Labor, Singapore's Green Plan, the Green Building Council Chile Branch, and the British Navy all recommend or use UVC. By positioning sterile air's high output UVC emitters at the coil, one can eliminate more than 99% of all virus, bacteria, and mold traveling in the air. Sterile air also eliminates the mold and biofilm growing on the coil and therefore prevents mycotoxins and spores from reproducing and spreading sickness and headaches. Whatever your industry, you can benefit from sterile air. Save 10 to 20% of the AC energy cost, eliminating coil cleaning, with payback often under one year. Improve sustainability by recycling the condensate. Provide IAQ from the AC system 99% free of virus, bacteria, and mold. Air conditioning has allowed us to live and work in extreme environments. The AC industry has successfully developed IAQ standards for dust particulates and CO2. Most buildings claim that they provide quality indoor air, but the World Health Organization, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the Hong Kong government, and many others all warn about the dangers of poor IAQ from air conditioning. The U.S. government estimates that businesses on average lose between 14 and 15 minutes per employee per day through poor IAQ. The Fisk and Rosenfeld study calculates that poor IAQ costs U.S. business 70 billion per year. Most people would be horrified if they could actually see the toxic cocktail of microorganisms living in air conditioning. Historically, we have felt protected because of the misunderstanding that viruses and bacteria are not distributed through the ducts. Legionella and SARS destroyed this myth. On June 24, 2009, ASHRAE's board of directors issued a position document indicating that the AC system distributes viruses. This has been confirmed by medical studies, including a recent one for norovirus. Hospitals feel protected by the use of HEPA filters that block up to 99.97% of particulates. However, one cubic foot of air typically contains 100,000 microparticles, with air traveling at approximately 800 feet per minute through a 24-inch square duct we have 80 million particles, so, on average, 0.003% or 24,000 of the particles per minute might break through the HEPA filter. If only some microorganisms break through, they can infect the patients. There are four fundamental sources of pathogens in buildings. First, bacteria, such as Legionella, that enter the building from the outside through the makeup air. Second, bacteria and virus, such as tuberculosis or flu, that are carried into the building by people. <laughs> Once in the air, the microbes are distributed throughout the building via the AC ducts and pass easily through the primary filters and cause mild flu or more serious illnesses. Third, and the most serious cause of poor IAQ, are mold and fungi that grow in the coil and drain pan. Consequently, the mold's mycotoxins and spores are distributed throughout the building, causing asthma, allergies, tiredness, headaches, flu-like <coughs> symptoms, and poor productivity. Fourth, the mold that grows in the coil becomes an anchor, or biological primer. This allows the dirt that passes through the filters to stick to the coil fins, 
forming a complex biofilm that produces and releases infectious microorganisms such as MRSA, Pseudomonas, and Aspergillus. These are also distributed throughout the building. The purpose of the evaporator or cooling coil is to provide thermal comfort in a building by removing the humidity and heat from the building's air. The cooled and dried air is circulated around the building by a large fan and is then sucked back to the air handler along with the warm and humid byproducts from the people in the building. A percentage of fresh air is then added. This mixed air is passed through the primary filters to remove big dirt particulates. The resulting condensate in the cooling coil is drained away to the sewer. The heat from the building's air is absorbed through the coil fins by a cold liquid, typically chilled water, that is being pumped through the coil. The heat is then transported in the water back to the chiller. The chiller has a compressor that initially squeezes gas, turning it into a liquid, that then passes through an expansion valve, returning it back to gas and making it cold. The cold refrigerant gas absorbs the heat being carried in the water coming from the cooling coil. This chilled water is then returned to the coil. There is a separate water circuit that collects and removes the heat absorbed by the compressor's gas, which is then sent to either a condenser coil or cooling tower. In either case, the heat is transferred from the water into the air, and the resulting cooled water is pumped back to the chiller. The metal fins of the coil are typically made of aluminum that has a heat transfer efficiency of 200 watts per meter Kelvin, whereas the biofilm that often covers the fins may be 0.2 watts per meter Kelvin or approximately 1,000 times less efficient. According to the California Society for Healthcare Engineering, it only requires a 1.5 millimeter fouling on the coil fins, 0.006 of an inch, to reduce the coil's efficiency by 16%. When particulates pass through the primary filters and settle on the coil, we should expect the condensate that is produced when the warm air meets the cold coil to wash the particulates down into the drain pan as easily as one washes mud off a car. But the dust stays on the coil and often requires harmful chemicals to remove it. We now know that as soon as the condensate is produced, mold and biofilm start growing. Mold takes four to six hours to double so it can easily multiply into a billion organisms in 12 days. As long as it's alive, it will cling to the coil fin. Its sticky surface attracts and grips the dirt, forming the biofilm. The biofilm reduces the heat transfer function of the coil, and consequently the air is not cooled sufficiently, nor is the humidity removed. To achieve the desired thermal comfort, either the occupants alter the thermostats or the maintenance department adjusts the chiller set point. In either case, this increases the electrical consumption of the chiller and pumps. In a typical office building, the AC system uses 60% of the building's energy, and of this, the chiller and pumps consume 70%. The 2006 ASHRAE published study estimated savings of 15 to 30% from clean coils. Sterile air's emitters continuously clean the coil fins by destroying the DNA inside the microbes. Once the DNA is destroyed, the microbe can neither grow nor duplicate, so it dies. The dead mold falls away with the dirt and is washed by the condensate into the drain pan. The biofilm growing in the ducts also dies once it is starved of its food source growing in the coil. The result is superior IAQ, with a reduction in staff sickness and absenteeism, often by as much as 25 to 50 percent, and an incredible reduction in hospital-acquired infections. One neonatal peer-reviewed study shows that after an investment of only $30,000, there was a drop in infections of 40 percent. Annual savings from antibiotics, lab tests, doctors, and nursing costs of an amazing $800,000.
the hospital had an extra bonus of shorter patient stay and greater bed availability. Sterile Air has numerous examples of energy savings of between 10 and 20 percent, with payback in one to two years, and in some cases even faster. The efficiency of the coil can easily be measured by checking the delta T of the coolant entering and leaving the coil. Before sterile air, the chilled water supply temperature was 6.6 .6 Celsius and the return 9.8 with a delta T of 3.2. After sterile air, and while keeping the same inside temperature and humidity, the supply temperature was raised to 8.5 and the return to 13.6 with a delta of 5.1, an improvement in coil efficiency of 21.1%. As proven by the Singapore Parliament Building Study, a simpler way of verifying coil improvement is with contact plates that provide quick visual evidence of the presence of mold in the coil and ducts, as well as verification of its removal by sterile air. When correctly placed by the coil, sterile air's emitters will eliminate more than 99% of the microbes traveling from the AC into the room spaces. This can also be verified by checking for bacteria and mold with an air tester positioned at the room air supply duct. Typical examples were taken before sterile air and after sterile air. Once the coil is free of biofilm, the condensate is also clean and can safely be used as grey water for cooling towers, landscaping, and toilets. 250 tons of air conditioning, 100,000 CFM, can produce a lot of water. In fact, the AC industry is one of the world's biggest water producers. A caution is necessary. Not all UVC is created equal. The output of UVC is invisible microwatts and is not always proportional to the watts coming from the electrical supply. In order to have sufficient microwatts to kill both the mold growing in the coil and the microbes in the air, Sterile Air recommends at least 750 UVC microwatts at any point on the coil face. Without maintaining these standards, the people in the building will remain vulnerable. To maintain a minimum UVC dose on a new coil, and to keep the coil clean, we recommend using one horizontal row of sterile air across the full coil face for every 30 inches, 76 centimeters, of vertical coil height. In hospitals and existing coils, use one row every 24 inches, 60 centimeters. For bigger coils, add rows and emitters. Sterile Air's system-engineered, high-quality UVC family of products can be installed in the largest AHUs or the smallest splits and cassettes. For ease of DE installation, we provide rapid install modular framing systems and the FIT fast install tower. Sterile Air has emitter tubes from 7 to 62 inches, 18 to 158 centimeters. The handheld sterile wand is used for surface decontamination and the portable RIDS unit decontaminates infected areas. The ceiling mounted units help reduce contamination in ORs, ICUs, isolation wards, laboratories and clean rooms. Sterile zone removes airborne contaminants. For water applications, use the hydro submersible and waterproof units. Sterile Air's refrigeration unit has been tested to function below minus 30 degrees Celsius. Food processing is increasingly benefiting from sterile air by minimizing the contamination risk and extending food shelf life. Whatever your industry, you can benefit from sterile air.